remember I'm reading this off these cards underneath this camera here. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 worst Saturday Night Live hosts. Go ahead. No topic is off limits. Think you can do another take? For this list, we'll be looking at some of the most awkward, unprofessional, or just plain unfunny hosts in SNL history. Which SNL host do you think was the worst? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, Ronda Rousey. UFC Hall of Famer Ronda Rousey fought tooth and nail for laughs during her hosting stint in January 2016, but unfortunately, she isn't as fast in front of the camera as she is in the ring. I'm a big girl, I'm gonna take care of myself. To be honest, hosting might not even be the right word for it. While she didn't make an ass of herself, she barely appeared in the live sketches. And when she did, her acting was wooden and she didn't really add anything. I like the moon. Yeah. But the moon's nice. Yeah, but I also like the day, you know? We can clearly see you looking at the cue cards, Rhonda. Throw in a bland performance by Selena Gomez, and you had one of the worst episodes of season 41. Number 19, Frank Zappa. Frank Zappa may be a stellar musician, but a suitable host he is not. Zappa hosted way back in October of 1978, and he made a total fool of himself and the show. Thank you, and remember I'm reading this off these cards underneath this camera here. Thank you, it's an awesome responsibility being selected out of millions of people to become the banner of NBC's new look. While we understand that SNL is meant to be funny, there's still an expected level of professionalism, and Zappa did not adhere to it. He constantly broke the fourth wall and even addressed the cue cards, which resulted in his ban from the show. I I'm a musician, and I'm giving a concert. No, that should be out there. That should be. Zappa came across as an extremely uncomfortable and risky presence that could undermine the show at any moment, and the crew allegedly hated him for it. Number 18, Charles Grodin. I, I didn't know that there would be an audience here. <laughs> the infamous Charles Grodin episode is a thing of Saturday Night Live legend. Grodin took up hosting duties in October 1977, but awkwardly stumbled through his lines, improvised large swaths of content, and derailed sketches due to being blissfully unprepared for the show. Uh, Chuck, Chuck, those are John's lines. Oh, John. John, oh, I'm sorry. Some say he missed rehearsals and bungled the night, and some say it was an Andy Kaufman-esque bit of meta humor that flew over everyone's heads. It was a disaster either way, and few people found him funny or enjoyable. Kind of like Andy Kaufman himself a lot of the time. Look, could we, could we take it again? I just, could we take those little things off your head? No, there maybe? is no again, Chuck. There's no again. This is live television. It's not the movies. Yeah. Well, I realize we're doing it live, but, uh, you know, there's good live and there's bad live, and uh, maybe we should try to do uh, some good live. Number 17, Milton Berle. Mentioning the Milton Berle episode to a cast member of the 1979 season may just give them unwanted flashbacks. I'm so unlucky, if they sawed a woman in half, I get the pot that eats. Would you believe that? <laughs> I'm going bad, I'm a real loser. Berle was allegedly a massive pain both in front of the camera and backstage. He had no qualms with completely taking over the show and tended to both hog the camera and upstage his fellow cast members. He he also insisted on ad-libbing, made outdated jokes, including doing spit takes. <laughs> he then ended the show with a mushy performance of September Song and a pre-planned standing ovation, much to the anger of Lorne Michaels. In short, everyone involved seemingly hated him, and he was never invited back. Number 16, MC Hammer. By the time MC Hammer hosted SNL on December 7, 1991, he was already dancing his way out of the zeitgeist. You Can't Touch This was well behind him, and while Too Legit to Quit proved relatively successful, it wasn't the earth-shattering single that the former was. Well, it's been a pretty good year for the Hammer. Hammer's new album is selling like hotcakes, and the Addams Family movie as a result, this episode reeked of a celebrity desperately trying to hold on to relevancy, especially when you consider that he was the musical guest as well. Unfortunately, he proved a bad host due to some wooden acting and making the odd decision to refer to himself in the third person. While he may be too legit to quit, he wasn't too legit to fail. And you are... Tell him it's Hammer. 
Number 15, January Jones. January Jones is often considered to be one of the weakest links of the otherwise stellar cast of Mad Men, but you could argue that Betty Draper is meant to be rather emotionless and boring. However, even January's most diehard fans had trouble defending her SNL hosting gig. Do it, say Don. Yes, say Don. Say, 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 say Don. Don. Say Don. Yeah, say Don. <laughs> Fine. Don. Yeah. <laughs> She carried the show with the same bland personality, and while that may work for Betty, it doesn't work for live comedy. If her rather uninspired live delivery wasn't bad enough, she also stumbled over lines and showed audible confusion regarding the cameras. <laughs> Critics thought she sucked the energy out of the show, earning her place in history as one of SNL's most awkward personalities. I'm Joan. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Number 14, Al Sharpton. Who in the right mind thought that a civic rights activist and Baptist minister would make for a good Saturday Night Live host? Sharpton hosted the show while running for president on December 6, 2003. But just because someone is a presidential candidate doesn't mean they're good at comedy. You ever been arrested? No, I haven't. You just pull us over because we're black. We're not doing anything illegal. We're just following the bright star in the East. Politicians and Baptist ministers do not often make for good actors. As everyone predicted, it was generally a disaster, as Sharpton often looked bored and uncomfortable, and it came across as little more than a transparent campaign ad. His 2018 misspelling of respect was funnier than anything he did on Saturday Night Live. Do you know anybody who speaks like that, Reggie? Well, no, not really. And the rest of this stuff is stereotypes. We shouldn't be perpetrating these stereotypes. 1935? Number 13, Adrian Brody. Adrian Brody is a terrific case in proving that drama and live comedy require completely different talents. While Brody may be an acclaimed Academy Award winning actor, he's easily one of Saturday Night Live's worst and most awkward hosts. Okay, go ahead, thank you. Yes, here I go to get it. Okay, go ahead, get it. Go ahead, get it. Go, you go, 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 you go get it. While he wasn't particularly funny throughout the whole show, it was his introduction of musical guest Sean Paul that really angered people. Brody allegedly went off script and introduced Paul while wearing fake dreadlocks and a Jamaican accent, a joke that was not approved or even known about. To make matters worse, it proved to be unfunny and offensive. The joke reportedly got Brody banned from the show, and he has since become a part of SNL legend. Number 12, Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky's stint on Saturday Night Live was oddly reassuring. It reinforced the idea that everyone has flaws and that even the all-time greats are human. I didn't know angels could fly so low. Gretzky is often considered to be the greatest hockey player to ever lace up skates, yet he's certainly not an actor. And that's putting it mildly. We suppose seeing him play hockey with Wayne and Garth was cool, but that's the extent of this episode's quality, which saw the sports legend noticeably glancing off camera and delivering his lines and jokes with the enthusiasm of a brick wall. The episode is great as a time capsule, but certainly not as a funny hour of television. <laughs> you talk too much. Oh, oh, oh. I hope he doesn't drown. <laughs> Number 11, Tom Green. Tom Green is certainly an acquired taste. The crass Green was invited to host back in November 2000 when he was at the height of his popularity, and it went about as poorly as you'd expect from the infamously odd performer. While we suppose the producers knew they were taking a risk when hiring the controversial comedian, it certainly didn't pay off. Green brought his brand of lowbrow, uncomfortable humor to the live sketch show, and the two types of comedy failed to mix. Next to his practiced sketch comedian co-stars, Green's farcical approach to acting came across as childish and unfunny. Number 10, Casey Affleck. If there's one celebrity primed to host Saturday Night Live, it's the gut-busting, rip-roaring Casey Affleck. In case you can't tell, we're being sarcastic. I come down to Dunkin' every day, grab a Corolla, have an extra lodge, three parliaments, take a big dump, that's kind of the routine. <laughs> to promote that hilarious movie Manchester by the Sea, Casey Affleck hosted the show in December 2016. And, well, it was the same old mumbly and deadpan Casey Affleck you've come to expect. While his reserved personality may work for dramatic movie roles, it isn't a boon in sketch comedy. Well, you gotta get the laugh. Yeah. You got nothing. Yeah. Besides the obvious standout Dunkin' Donuts segment, Casey seemed completely out of his element and had little chemistry with the cast. 
Still, we must give him props for his self-deprecating monologue. I don't know if you've noticed, but I have this kind of scraggly beard, and it's not in a Santa way, but more in a Duck Dynasty way. Number nine, Lindsay Lohan. What makes Lindsay Lohan's terrible hosting gig from 2012 so outlandish is that she'd already proven that she could do it well. Yeah, can I see your eyes, please? <laughs> you know... She's good. Keenan, I should be checking your eyes. Oh, I'll save you the trouble. I've been stoned since Good Burger. Lohan had hosted Saturday Night Live three times going into this gig, so expectations were fairly high, despite the state of her career at the time. What could have been a big win for the actress instead went down as another missed opportunity. I'm sorry, um, is everything okay? She had next to no energy throughout the night, and her line delivery was extremely stilted and boring. To make matters worse, it was clear that she was reading off of cue cards. And like anyone obviously reading from a card, Lohan was emotionless, stiff, and boring. I do get the feeling that everybody thinks I'm gonna screw something up. No, no, hey, look at me. Everybody here believes in you, everyone. We wouldn't have you back otherwise. Thanks, Kristen. <laughs> Number eight, Andrew Dice Clay. Andrew Dice Clay was a prominent stand-up comedian in the late 80s, known for crude and sexist humor. To much fanfare, Clay took up the mantle of SNL host in May 1990, just eight months after he was banned from MTV. Why is this happening to me? All this fuss over one stinking show I never meant to hurt nobody. Both Nora Dunn and Sinead O'Connor refused to appear out of protest, and some viewers sent in hate mail and threats. But their fears were unwarranted, as Clay was painfully sanitized and blandly self-referential, which made for a dull host and also annoyed the comedian's established fan base. Next thing you know, you'll pop a boinger or two, you know? <laughs> and you're gonna be thinking about giving someone that nice baloney pony, you know what I say? Like the failed opening of Capone's Vault, this was a national media event that instantly deflated. Can you see I wish I'd never been born? You've got your wish, Dice Man. You've never been born. Number seven, Paris Hilton. Paris Hilton was a bit of a controversial pick as many people were hesitant regarding her lack of acting or comedic experience. They were right to hesitate. Ken and I are in love. Hilton was not only unfunny and incredibly unprofessional, but she was also allegedly a huge pain behind the scenes as well. Tina Fey told Howard Stern that Hilton took herself way too seriously and was, quote, proud of how dumb she is. She also told him that Hilton was just generally difficult. You must be really unprofessional to have the otherwise sweet Tina Fey say something like that about you. We've got a great show tonight. Keen is here. <laughs> Again, her words, not ours. Number six, Louise Lasser. Louise Lasser was plastered all over the magazines of the mid 70s due to her role in the satirical soap opera, Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. Uh, let me tell you something, they, um, they did tell me that this might happen and... Um... <laughs> However, she quickly left the show after exhausting herself and seemingly had a minor breakdown getting arrested and reportedly crawling around looking for drugs during SNL rehearsals. I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. It's in the middle of it now. I don't think anyone here knows we're filming. So we can just, you think you can do another take? No. She was hated by Chevy Chase due to her apparent solipsism and constantly tried to back out of her obligations. The show itself was a sloppy and awkward piece of self-deprecating meta-humor, and Lauren Michaels refused to have the episode rerun out of embarrassment. Number five, Donald Trump. We're not adding Trump to this list solely because he's Trump. People thought he was truly terrible on the show, and so he earned the spot. <laughs> Trump hosted the show twice, once in 2004 and again in 2015 while he was running for president. And while the episode garnered very high ratings, Trump simply couldn't let go of his ego for an hour and have some fun. I said to the writers of this sketch, keep it modest, okay? It's better to start with low expectations. That way, you have nowhere to go but up. The episode seemed far too sterilized and pre-planned, as if the people in his team had vetoed 90% of the materials the writers must have surely come up with. Critics also felt Trump made for a dreadful host due to his horrible comedic timing. Number four, Michael Phelps. It's no secret that athletes kind of suck as comedians, and while Wayne Gretzky was awful, he looks like Jim Carrey next to Michael Phelps. Oh boy, that Michael Phelps episode. 
He may be the fastest human to ever enter water, but he had the grace of a dump truck in front of the camera. Stacy, Beth, Ashley, Rachel, and Jenny. <laughs> That's funny. I also picked Stacy, Beth, Ashley, Rachel, and Jenny. Your friends are hot. Not only did he have no semblance of comedic timing, but he painfully stumbled through his lines and failed to read his cue cards on numerous occasions. The man is clearly not comfortable in live sketch comedy, and it made for an agonizingly awkward hour of television. And as you can tell, it works wonders for me. <laughs> Number 3. Nancy Kerrigan Let's be honest here, that Nancy Kerrigan episode was a blatant ratings ploy, and nothing more. After being attacked by a hired man linked to rival Tanya Harding, the figure skater was national news, which the producers of SNL decided was a good enough reason to have her host. It definitely wasn't as the episode demonstrated. Gotta ask you this, how's the knee doing? Well. I still have a small bump now, but it really doesn't hurt. She was a horrible actress and comedian who lacked both timing and charisma, and she looked supremely uncomfortable the entire time, almost as if she was internally questioning why she was there. Go ahead. No topic is off limits. Ask me anything you want about the last few months over here. We were, and still are, wondering the same thing. I was just not trying to think about that. I'm just glad that I skated to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. Number 2. Justin Bieber While it may have been popular to hate on Bieber in 2013, we like to think that viewers kept an open mind when it came to his hosting of Saturday Night Live. However, even the most open-minded viewers must admit that this gig was horrific. All right, uh, abs, not do the abs. Yeah, there you go. Bieber acted like he was the hottest thing on the planet, and came across as if he did not care at all about his performance or his cast members' comfort. Bill Hader allegedly called out Bieber's diva behavior, deeming him difficult to get along with and singling out his enormous entourage who doted on his every move. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few dishonorable mentions. Gal Gadot Hey, Rachel. No, no, no. Everything is okay. Don't worry. I'm having a really good time with LJ. Mwah. Rudy Giuliani. And eating anything no matter where you find it. <laughs> Yum! New Yorky! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Steven Seagal Action stars don't often make for great comedians. However, that didn't stop SNL from hiring Steven Seagal as its host back in 1991. I couldn't help overhearing what you guys were saying, you know? Oh, well, you were so quiet, you know? How long were you back there? We were just talking, you know? Yeah, you know. Seagal was never known for his acting chops, and sadly, when taking the spotlight on SNL, he didn't surprise anyone. Bad acting is one thing, but he was an alleged pain in the butt behind the scenes. That makes me very nervous, you know? People who see my daughter should have plans. He apparently complained about not understanding the jokes that were given to him, pitched terrible and inappropriate sketch ideas, and was reportedly rude to both the cast and writers. Perhaps the most interesting, a picture of you listening to the President of the United States on speaker speakerphone as he reveals his part in the conspiracy. When it comes to horrible SNL hosts, no one competes with the boring and misguided mess that was Steven Seagal. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.